What's up you guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is actually super last minute. It's actually a video that I've wanted to do for a very long time, but I feel like it is such a long dramatic story that I was like dreading talking to you guys about it. But then I realized that I've actually been putting YouTube off a lot just because I know I need to tell this story before I do any more YouTube videos just because I feel like a lot of the things I want to reference are in regards to my past and things that I have went through and my future videos just won't make sense unless I do this video. So I literally was just cleaning my makeup brushes right now and I was like, you know what? You look okay. Like just do the video. Just get it over with. Like because when, every time I think about it, I'm like, oh, I'll do it Monday. And then Monday comes and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it Wednesday. And you know what? I was just like, no more putting it off. Like, just get it done. Just tell your story. So in today's video, I'm finally going to be opening up and telling you guys my story and what really got me into fitness. Okay, guys. So again, I did not plan this video out. So I hope I can tell it in a good order but i just want to put this out there i am not ever 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 going to bash anyone on the internet this is just my story my experience i really want to open up and tell you guys exactly what happened and how i experienced things from my perspective for the sake of everyone in this video i am going to be changing the names of everyone so so their privacy is protected i literally just picked random names for the people that are involved and yeah, let's just get into it. So let's fast forward to three years ago. I was engaged. I had been in a relationship with this man and for the sake of this video, I am just gonna name him Jay. So I was engaged to Jay and we had been together for eight years. So three years in high school, it was kind of off and on. So from like 15 to 18, you know, it was off and on, typical high school relationship. And then once I graduated from 18 to 23, five years, we lived together. We like literally never broke up. It was just like a pretty stable relationship. So during this five years from 18 to 23, I was going through a lot of personal things within myself too. You know, there was a lot of like trauma that I experienced in my childhood that I hadn't dealt with. And it like resulted in me becoming like super depressed and I didn't know how to deal with my emotions so I just got really really depressed and I wasn't active I gained a bunch of weight when I graduated high school you know I was about 120 pounds I think and during those five years I gained about 60 70 pounds and I got up to about 187 so you know I had my own personal things that I was dealing with in the relationship and I'm not justifying any of his actions and putting the blame on myself in any way, but I do take responsibility for my faults in the relationship, I guess. So I'm not gonna lie, you know, I was one of those naive girls who was dating a man who, let me say boy, I was dating a boy who always cheated, was always texting other girls, and I always forgave him. I don't know why, I just always did. So I do take responsibility on like the whole situation because there were so many times that I could have left, but I didn't because I don't know. I was just literally like young and dumb, I guess. So he proposed to me in September of 2016 and in February of 2017, I decided that I wanted to start taking care of my health and lose some weight. I was 187 pounds. I had no confidence and every girl wants to look good on her wedding day, you know? So I had started going to the gym and I was just doing cardio, you know, nothing crazy. I was doing like a mile a day or something. And so, you know, that's kind of when I started like my little fitness journey, I guess, was in February of 2017. So I'm still in the relationship. Everything's going good. I completely trust this man. You know, like there's no suspicions and nothing's going on. I think I'm happy. I think everything's perfect. Yada, yada, yada. Let's, let's fast forward to June 24th, 2017. That is when my whole entire universe got flipped upside down like it was just the craziest day of my life so it's around 11 30 a.m and i get back from the gym and i had went with my friend roxy that day i get home and i lived in an apartment so you literally had to like have a clicker to open the gate or i go inside the gate and i park and there's a man standing by 
a truck and he has a stack of paperwork in his hand and I'm like, oh, that's weird, whatever, you know what I mean? And again, for the sake of this video, I'm changing everyone's name, so this man's name is going to be John. So I get out of my car and I've never seen this man in my life and I start walking towards like my fence and he's like, are you Ashley? And I'm like, like what the hell, like who is this man? So I was super sketched out that this man I had never seen before knew my name. So I really don't know what to say and I'm like super uncomfortable and I'm like, yeah. And he's like, can I talk to you? And I'm like, like I don't know what to do. Like I literally am like so sketched out. The situation is so weird. The vibes are so off. He has a stack of paperwork in his hand. Literally in my head, I'm like, is this like the manager? Is this the owner of the apartments? Like am I getting evicted? Like I literally didn't know what was going on. But I started walking towards him slowly and he just takes a deep breath and the words that came out of his mouth i will never forget and he proceeds to say i don't know how to tell you this but your fiance has been having an affair with my wife for the past six months and i swear to god my world went silent he proceeded to talk and i didn't hear one word he said you guys like Seriously, it's like my heart, my soul, my throat fell into my stomach. My world went silent and I just felt so much like, I can't even explain what I felt at the moment. Like, oh my God, thinking about it literally makes me emotional. Going back to that sadness, it's, it's so sad. But literally like every part of me just like fell into my stomach and he kept talking and then I think he realized that I literally just zoned out and he literally was just like, do you need to sit down? So he like opens his truck door, we sit there, he hands me the stack of paperwork and it's literally just all of the text messages, all of the times highlighted from the past six months of Jay and his wife. For the sake of this video, I'm going to name her Laura. So all of Jay and Laura's text messages from the past six months, 2 a.m., 5 a.m., 3 a.m., every single day for the past six months and we're sitting in his truck and he just proceeds to tell me all the information he has because honestly you guys let me just say this man took investigating an affair to the next level like the amount of details he had was literally amazing like I'm so thankful that he took the time to find things out about the affair before he came to me because he had so much evidence and so much proof and so much knowledge that there was no way I can question if he was right or wrong like it was it was like a sure thing like my fiance was cheating on me the man that i had literally revolved my world around that i had loved since i was 14 years old was having an affair with another woman for the past six months basically like the, the majority of our engagement and we literally sat there and we talked in his truck just going over details and everything he knew for literally about an hour. It's so funny. We even took a selfie together because he was like, you want to know it'd be so funny if we took a selfie just because we didn't know that he was going to go tell me. So we took a picture together and I will post it right here. I'm going to blur out his face just because I don't want to like expose his identity. But that's the picture. Yes, I was extremely overweight still, as you guys can tell. But yeah, so we talk in the truck for about an hour and finally i'm like okay like i get it there's there's no way to deny this is happening like and he's just like i i have to confront jay about it like i i didn't even know what i was going to say so I, I get out of his truck i go inside and i text jay right away and i'm like where are you he's at like applebee's having drinks with his friends or something and i'm like can you come home and he's like yeah i'll be home soon and i was like no can you come home now and he actually came home in which I knew, like I knew he knew that I knew, you know what I mean? So, so John had let me keep the stack of papers of all their text messages and everything. So Jay walks through the door and I literally just fling all the paperwork in his face. And I'm just like, I didn't even know what I was going to say, but oh my God, you guys, the anger that I was feeling came out the moment he walked through that door. I literally just threw all the papers at him and he just rushed towards me and was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And I was just bursting into tears and I don't even remember what words were said, but I just remember there was just so much emotion going on at that time. And then his sister, who we lived with at the time, 
walks in the door and she's like, what's going on? Because she sees papers all over the floor. Like, it was just a mess. We're both crying. And I told her, you know, like, your brother has been cheating on me for the past six months. And then she starts crying. And then she calls her mom. And then Jay's mom comes. And it was just a wreck. Like, that was, like, the most intense day of my life. That night he left and he stayed with his mom and I just stayed home and I cried and I cried and I cried and I couldn't believe that that was happening. I was mortified. I wanted to know who knew, how many people knew. Like, I was just on another level of hurt. Like, I can't even explain the amount of pain that I was feeling that day. Like, it was insane. You know, I feel like I'm telling this story and I'm smiling, but it's just because like I'm looking back and I'm so thankful that I'm past that situation. But honestly, at that moment, I thought I was going to die of heartbreak. Like, I swear to you, I have never felt that amount of pain in my entire life, you know? Thankfully, John was a very, very, very respectful man. Um, he actually was like a preacher or a pastor or something, or their religion was like apostolic. So technically, she was like a preacher's wife. She wore the skirts and everything. Like, if you saw this woman in the streets, you would never think she is someone that would have an affair with an engaged man, ever. Like, if someone were to tell me, like, that's the woman who your fiancé is going to cheat on you with, I would literally think they're crazy, but it happens. So, again, thankfully, John was super respectful and super sweet, and he um, had given me his number. So, he texted me later that night, just checking up on me. And then we ended up we ended up talking to each other on the phone and he was just like, you know, what is Jay saying? Like, what is he telling you? Because I want to make sure that he's not trying to sugarcoat anything and make it seem like I'm lying or anything. So, of course, Jay was. Jay was trying to tell me it was nothing. It only happened a couple times. And John was like, no. Like, I talked to my wife, Laura, and I pulled multiple details from her. And it happened over, like, 15 times within the six months at your house, at my house. John had gotten so much details from his wife. So, you know, I talked on the phone with him. He kind of told me more of what he knew. So then Jay came back the next day and I confronted him again because I was like, dude, if you're going to tell me the truth, then tell me the truth. I want to know everything, you know? This wasn't just something that happened a couple times. Like, this was a whole affair. Like, this was, this, this was like deep, you know what I mean? So... Me and John proceeded to talk on the phone for the next couple weeks just trying to figure out what we're going what we were going to do. You know, John was married to his wife. I was engaged. We both had entire lives with these people, you know. It was just like it was just such a hard situation. So for the next 2 weeks, me and John spoke on the phone every single day comparing stories and we got so much truth. We dug so deep. We literally did like some hardcore investigating. They had no idea we were talking on the phone with each other until they finally figured it out like wait, they're comparing stories like they're talking to each other. But it went so deep, you know. It wasn't just a quick like hookup. Oh, and mind you, I didn't even mention that they were co-workers that is how they met laura was new at the branch so they were co-workers at a bank together laura was new to the branch and jay was the person who trained her and that's kind of how they started vibing and that's kind of how the whole affair started so me and john talked on the phone for two weeks and just compared stories and compared details because we wanted to know everything that happened you know we didn't want to feel like we were being made fools of we found out about an affair and we wanted to make sure that we knew every single detail. I don't know why we wanted to know every detail, but we wanted to know every detail. So, you know, John would call me and be like, hey, so I found out Laura and him met up after work behind Pier 1 Imports and she did so such and such to him. And then, you know, and then I'd talk to Jay and I'd be like, when the hell did you go to her house? Like all these things. And then I'd find out when John would go on his bike rides that Jay would go over there and sleep with her. Or I used to go play bingo with like my cousins and stuff. And that's like a four hour thing. So when I would go do that, you know, she would come, Laura would come over to my house and sleep with Jay. And, you know, there was just like a lot of details that we found out that made the whole affair so much worse in my eyes. And... You know, one of the things that really, really broke me was Laura was, in my eyes, a skinny, beautiful, little white girl. And I was totally opposite of that at the time. You know, I was about 160 pounds, short, thick Mexican girl. You know, like, I was so heartbroken that I could never be what she was. And it's just like, in my heart, all I could keep thinking was like, wow, is this what he really wanted? Like... I was so broken at the time. 
and I really did not think I was going to get emotional during this video because I feel like I'm completely over the situation, but I'm going back, like thinking about like thinking about how I felt at the time, like it's heartbreaking. Like honestly, like I'm so proud of myself for becoming who I am, but at the time it was just like a really hard situation. Okay, so sorry, I had to pull myself together really quick just, just because this story is hard to tell and I hope it makes sense when I'm done with it, but um so it was it was a really hard thing, you know, and then I had, you know, you know, Jay for for about a week and a half was staying at his mom's house and then he'd come ho like over during the day and like grab stuff and talk to me. And, you know, Jay was a sweet talker. He always had been. He was such a flirt. Like he just knew always knew what to say. He always had the right words to say. So even though I was getting all these details about his affair, he would come home and justify everything and just constantly tell me like I love you I want to marry you that's why I proposed you know like with her it was just sex like I did it and this is the part that I will never forget that stuck in my head every single day and it's like it was just sex and I only did it because I knew I wouldn't get caught and the fact that he had admitted that like it blew my mind and all I could think of every night was so if you have the opportunity to cheat on me and you know I'll never find out you're gonna do it again and again and I don't even think he realized it at the time but that was literally like what I thought about every single night leading up to when I left him so so I found out about the affair June 24th and for about a month me and Wesley talked on the phone every single day just checking up on each other comparing details you know seeing what the other significant other was telling us you know just you know, just kind of being there for each other and making sure that they weren't trying to sugarcoat or, you know, lie to us about anything, you know? We found out so many details, you know? They had a secret Instagram account and basically it was like a combination of her favorite college football team and my fiance's favorite, um, what is it called? Like professional team. I think it was just like Clemson Raiders or something, something random that like was both of their favorite things and they both had the login and when one of them would log in and like the other one's picture that's how they knew that they could text each other they both had numbers saved under fake names like I don't know like they had a whole ass system and to me it's like if it's only sex like why go so deep into having like such crazy ways to communicate you know what I mean like it just there was so many things that we found out like we found out that she left church. She lied and told John that she had a headache and she needed to go to Walmart to get pills during church and met up with Jay and they did their thing and then she proceeded to go back to church. Like there was so many details about the affair that blew my mind. I'm not even gonna lie. There was a part of me that wanted to whoop Laura's ass so bad. And honestly, 18 year old Ashley would have went for her but I was 22 at the time and I felt like I was maturing a little bit and I just thought to myself, you know, like me beating this girl's ass is not going to take away the fact that she slept with my fiance over and over again. Like that, like me taking out my anger in that way isn't going to change the situation. And I knew that's not who I wanted to be. You know, I didn't want to be a girl who fought over a fiance like, ew, like, no, I didn't want that. Like, thinking about that, like, no, that's just not who I wanted to be. So and it's crazy because to this day I have never seen the woman in person you know she called me on the phone the day I found out about the affair and she was like Ashley I'm so sorry and I was like yeah yeah shut the fuck up no you weren't if you were sorry you wouldn't have let my fiance slat his in you you know what I mean so it's crazy you know everyone asks me like did you beat her ass and I'm like no I didn't and I'm very proud of myself like I look back now and I'm like you know what Young Ash handled that situation so fucking well because again, 18 year old Ash probably would have went psychotic on her. And the fact that me and John found these out, like I'm so proud of us. Honestly, maybe me and him should go into business and be like the new version of cheaters. Like, I don't know, but we literally dug deep. So we did that for about a month and then we came to the conclusion, John was a very religious man. 
him and his family did not believe in divorce and he really wanted to fight for his marriage and I respected that. You know, Jay was, Jay was the only man I had ever loved with my entire soul. I, I had been with him from 14 to 23 basically. My entire world revolved around him. I had no confidence and I thought that he was what I deserved at the time. So we both decided to end communication with each other and kind of just focus on our relationships. So that was about July and this part is gonna be so hard for me to open up about. I feel like I'm gonna get super emotional. So, so right when I turned 18, more than anything, I had wanted kids with Jay. And he knew that, and I feel like once I found out about the affair, he was willing to do anything to, you know, try to make things better. So in July, I found out that I was actually pregnant and Okay, I'm sorry you guys like this is like a super raw real emotional video I know I've never really talked about this part out loud you know I've told a few family and friends but it's really hard to tell it to a camera and it's just crazy you know so super sorry I usually am not a super emotional person I feel like I don't really cry a lot so I think it's crazy that I'm like getting really emotional about this but I found out I was pregnant in July and even though I was still in a lot of pain and I thought about the affair every single day and I had so much anger towards Jay, I was actually really excited, you know? I was 22 years old and I thought that's what I wanted, you know? I was like, you know, I've always wanted to be a mom. Like, maybe this is what's gonna help fix our relationship. Maybe this is God's way of bringing us back together. Like, I don't know. Those were just like the thoughts running in my head at the time. And, you know, we were super excited. We told his mom, we told his sister, I was about six weeks. Um, and then at about eight weeks, I had a miscarriage. So that was around August. And I feel like that really, really, really destroyed me even more, you know? Okay, I had to take another break, you guys. I'm sorry, like I had to like go fix my makeup because I know I'm just looking a hot mess right now, but. Honestly, do not judge me in this video on how I look. This is not cute. My nose is all red. Like, I'm not a cute crier. Um, so I found out at about eight and a half weeks, I had a miscarriage. So that was about August. And that totally destroyed me. Um, at, during this whole time, I was working at a school district. So I had summers off. So thankfully, when I found out about the affair, it was in June. Um... I was off work, so I was home, and I really got to just kind of deal with that and cry, and, you know, thankfully, I didn't have work, but in August, I had gone back to work, and at the time, I was pregnant, so I had told my coworkers, and then I had the miscarriage, and I don't know what happened in me, but I feel like that miscarriage broke me and hurt me so much, and I felt like I was at rock bottom. And I realized, like, I remember just laying in bed and just being like, I am so unhappy in my life. Like, I'm unhappy in my relationship. I'm unhappy with my weight. I'm unhappy with my health. I'm unhappy with my job. You know, I was working, even though I had such a good job at the time, I was an attendance clerk for a school district. I had amazing benefits. I made great money. I had summers off. I had vacations off. It wasn't for me. You know, I felt so sad every day when I went to work. And something just clicked and I remember literally just texting my boss and quitting and that was like the dumbest thing I'd ever I had ever done like don't ever do that like that was not a smart decision on my part but I had felt like I just felt like my whole world was falling apart anyway so might as well destroy it some more and so that was like that was in August and I decided to just start focusing on me you know I was like you know what I may be unhappy in my relationship, but maybe we could work things out. You know, I was still so destroyed in getting over the miscarriage and the affair that I didn't know what else to do but to completely in dive into something, and that was working out. So every single day he would go to work. I would kind of just like wake up, 
do random things and work out. And I would literally spend hours at the gym just doing cardio. And I did that for about two months, so September and October, every single day I would just go to the gym, spend a crazy amount of time there, literally just go ham on running. I started losing weight. I remember getting back, I remember getting down to about 146 pounds. And, you know, I started feeling really good about myself. And me and Jay were okay, you know. I feel like I had a lot of resentment towards him, you know, like everything he you know, I used to love everything about him. Like, I could literally just stare at him and I was just like so infatuated with him. And it wasn't like that anymore, you know? Like, September and October, I resented him so much. Like, he got off work around 5.30 and I we lived in Atwater at the time and I would drive into Merced because that's where I worked out. That's where all my friends and family were. So every day I would go, I would drive back to Atwater when he was like getting off work and I would just feel so sad. Like, like I was like happy throughout the day. I was at the gym. I was seeing family. I was hanging out with friends and then 5.30 or 6 would come around and I'd have to drive back home to him and I just felt so sad, like there was no excitement. Like, and I remember just thinking like, why am I so sad driving home to the person that I'm supposed to be in love with, you know? like. And I remember just thinking that all the time. And then, you know, November rolled around and it was my 23rd birthday and I just remember he did nothing to make me feel special. Like, I remember we argued all day that day. It was just like such a bad day. Like, and I was just like so angry. My birthday was on November 30th. And I just remember like that day I just woke up and I was so unhappy. My entire birthday, I tried having a good birthday and it was just misery. And a couple days later, December 4th, it was like a Tuesday, I believe. I just woke up and I just realized I'm done. Like, I'm done. And at the time, I had no job. The car was under his name. I had nothing. And I just texted my mom. And I'm so thankful that I had my mom and my stepdad at the time. Who's my mom and told her, I can't do this anymore. And thankfully, she said, come home. And that's what I did. I packed up everything that I could while he was at work in our car that was under his name. That was technically his car. I drove it to my mom's. And thankfully, my middle sister had just gone off to college at chico state so my parents had an extra room like a little twin bed and i was just like all right like this is home again like i moved i moved out as soon as i turned 18 and i literally felt like such a loser moving back home at 23 with no job with no car like with nothing like he came and he picked up that car so fast even though he swore he would never do that he would never take the car for me like whatever he came and got the car and we were done. And I don't know where I found the strength to not go back, but I'm so proud of myself that I didn't. And I can't even explain how low I felt at that point in my life. You know, I was 23 years old. Sorry, my voice is so shaky. Let me pull it together. And let me just mention in here that the whole time after I found out about the affair from about August to November, I would go hang out with my best friend Carlos and he's honestly one of the main people who helped me get through my relationship and helped me realize that I needed more. Like, we, like in November, I think Carlos got sick of me crying about the same thing and he's like, girl, we're going to make a pros and cons list just so you can shut the fuck up and you can choose what you want to do. So I literally cried. He wrote down everything I said in the pros and the cons list section and I was done, he handed it to me. And literally you guys, the cons outweighed the pros so much and it opened my eyes and I was like, damn. Like not only am I miserable, but in my mind, I know I need to leave. Like, so shout out to my best friend Carlos. I love you more than life. You know that I could not have gotten through that breakup without you. So this is literally me telling you, you are everything. You are literally the best friend. Everyone needs a friend like you. Like you are literally such an angel in my life. So, okay, so that was a side note, but I literally need to mention that because uh, there's so much that happened in that time. And I, I pray that you guys understand where I'm coming from in this video. So, I moved back home and I remember like the first couple of nights that I was there, I didn't even cry. And I had, my friends were telling me like, it's okay, you're gonna cry. Like if you cry, like don't even worry about it. And I remember just being there the first couple nights and just like adjusting to being home again. And I didn't cry. Like I felt sad, you know, because I just felt like I felt so lost, but I wasn't sad that the relationship was over. 
And, you know, I've seen a quote, you know, I love quotes. And I've seen this quote, and it makes so much sense now. And it's just like, a woman ends a relationship in her mind before she physically leaves. And that is so true. I feel like every single day I was more and more done that when I physically left, I was like completely done. Like I was completely over the situation. So, you know, I remember that first week just thinking like, okay, Ash, you're 23. Like, what are you going to do with your life? And I just told myself like, you're going to create the life that you wish you would have created right when you were 18. So I knew that I wanted to continue losing weight. I was about 146 pounds when I moved back home. And I honestly felt great about myself going from 187 pounds to 146 pounds. Like I honestly was kind of feeling myself. I was like, okay, okay. Like let's, let's keep going. Like let's keep working. So I remember telling myself, like I want two part-time jobs and I want to focus on working out. So it was just like such a coincidence. My friend Roxy worked at worked at the mall at the time and Sunglass Hut was hiring and she's like, hey, I know the manager, like come drop off a resume like right now. And I literally didn't even have like a printer at the time. I literally went to Roxy's job and she printed my resume and then I took it to Sunglass Hut and the manager was dope as hell. And he literally just like, like, all right, come in for an interview tomorrow. Interviewed, got the job at Sunglass Hut. And I was like, right, cool. I have one job, but now I need another job because Sunglass Hut is not gonna pay the bills. So I knew I wanted to waitress. I had, I've, I've worked so many jobs in my life and I always thought waitressing would be so cool. So I went to Atwater, which is literally like a five minute drive away from Merced. And I applied at the Denny's and I got the job and it was like amazing. They both fell into a perfect schedule. Literally five days a week, I would go work Denny's from like seven or eight in the morning to about one. Then I would go straight to Sunglass Hut from 2 p.m. to 9 p.m. I would literally go to the gym like after 9 p.m. or some days I didn't have Sunglass Hut, so I'd go after work at one. Like I was just so completely indulged myself in working and working out. That's all I did and honestly, you guys, like I, had to hit rock bottom to completely re rebuild myself up. You know, like I would borrow my grandma's car to go to work. You know, my mom had an extra little hoopty ass Honda that I would drive. Like literally it was like a 2001 or something. Like sometimes I was like afraid to drive it on the freeway. So I was afraid it was going to break down, but I was like, whatever, it's going to get me to work. And you know, I worked my ass off. I saved some money and thankfully I was able to buy myself a car. I can't even explain how amazing that felt to have my own car. Like it was nothing fancy, but it was a 2015 Honda and I was feeling like such a baddie and it was like a Honda Sport. So I was like motorsport, put that bitch in sport. Like I was literally feeling myself when I got my Honda. So, you know, there was just little things that happened that just made me feel so good about myself. You know, I was going out, I was hanging out with my friends, you know, I was losing weight, I was meeting new people, I was working two jobs. By the way, anyone who knows me knows that my, that my Denny's crew, I wanna give a shout out to them because they are the most amazing people. I literally love them with everything. I would go to Denny's every single day and majority of the people there would light up my world. Like, I love that job more than anything. Like. The waitressing part, like dealing with the people, sometimes that was just a mess, but okay, I'm like rambling. You guys know I do not know how to tell a story in order. I completely lost contact with John and his wife. I had no idea what they had been up to. You know, about two months after I left Jay, he decided to move to Sacramento, um, which I thought was like a really good thing. I know we needed that space. Um, seeing each other just wasn't going to be good for either one of us. So I'm super glad he moved and he was going to go focus on himself out there. And then I ended up quitting Sunglass Hut and I ended up getting a job at a local nutrition store in my hometown. And so I was still working Denny's in the nutrition store. And then one day John comes in and I'm like so excited to see him and we're like just like vibing like oh my god it's been so long how are you you know I finally told him I had left Jay he had no idea and he's like wow like I'm so happy for you you're like doing amazing and then he proceeds to tell me that him and Laura are getting a divorce because he found her in the car with another man who had a girlfriend I was like honey like, do you have a thing for men with wives and girlfriends? Like, I don't know. But I was so happy for him because honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I thought John was such an amazing person and I knew he deserved better than her. And I know he knew I deserved better than Jay. And I was just so happy that both of us had moved on and we're finding ourselves. You know what I mean? I know that we both went through such a hard, embarrassing experience that 
I felt like we both just needed to leave those toxic people and just move on. It was just so refreshing to see him doing well and for me to be doing well and I was super excited to tell him that I was actually in a new relationship and remember he had told me on the phone one time when we would talk like when we found out about the affair like you know Ashley like I'm gonna pray for you and I know God is gonna send you someone so amazing and so I was so excited to tell him that I was in a new relationship and, and that my person was so nice and he treated me so well and then I remember like a couple weeks later, John comes in and he's like, hey, guess what? Like, I'm actually dating someone. He shows me her picture. She's freaking beautiful. Not even kidding. Like, she's literally like a freaking model. Let's fast forward to now. It's 2020 and I'm in better shape than I have ever been in my life. I'm mentally stronger than I have ever been in my life. I accomplished one of my dreams on growing my Instagram platform and using it in a way to inspire other people. I have sponsorships from amazing brands, which I never thought would be possible. So I really wanted to do this video to show you guys, life is not easy. You know, everyone has a struggle that they have to overcome in their life. You know, opening up and finally telling you guys this story, I feel like it's like, weight lifted off my shoulders. This, this is a story that I've wanted to tell you guys for so long because I feel like I talk about things that I've went through and everyone's like, what have you went through? Like, I don't get it. Like, why do you keep referencing that? So I wanted to tell you guys this story, tell you guys like the things that I've had to overcome to get where I am. You know, my life has not been perfect. I've, I've had to go through a lot of things. I've had to grow in a lot of ways and I look back at 2017 and everything that happened with the affair and the end, like in my engagement ending, as the biggest blessing of my life. You know, like if that would not have happened, I wouldn't be who I am or where I am today. You know, so I really hope that you guys take something from this video and know that you, if you are in a toxic relationship, you know, know that you're worth more. Know that you deserve better and you are strong enough to leave and you are strong enough to create a new life for yourself. I wish I had someone to tell me that and I'm thankful for the internet because now I get to tell you guys that if you're watching this video, you deserve more. You are strong. You can create a life you love. You can make your dreams come true. Take it from me. My dream was to do Instagram. My dream was to do YouTube and now I'm doing it and I will forever be thankful for life struggles because it made me who I am. So. I'm going to wrap this video up. I want to thank you guys so much for watching it. I'm sorry for getting so freaking emotional during it, but it's real. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button so you never miss another video. And I will be back with another video very soon.